Hey guys, Jared here, and I have been relentlessly working on my application with like no distractions for like the last two months now, hence the no videos that are happening. By the way, the app is coming out July 22nd. Woo! Basically, Augmented Reality Kit has come out, and I have been dying to test it out. So, that's what we're gonna do today in this video. We're just gonna jump into AR Kit, kinda learn what it's about, and then see if we can place objects around the room when I tap the screen. So let's jump right into it. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into Xcode 9 here and then create a new Xcode project. This will be an aug augmented reality app. Um, this already has some presets and some code that we can take a look at and start playing around with. So augmented reality app, go ahead, click next and our product name, you can go ahead and put this as whatever you want. So. I'll do that. <laughs> then we go ahead, language swift and content technology. You can actually switch this between scene kit, sprite kit and metal. So something to note here is if you had like a 2D game or something that you want to do in a 3D space, you could do that here, which is pretty sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and just select scene kit because that's what I'm used to. So scene kit, and then let's go ahead, click next and create it. All right, so here we are inside of our project. And the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead, jump into the viewcontroller.swift here, and let's just kind of learn a little bit of the code and how things work. Now, if you ever played around with scene kit, it's pretty much like setting up a scene kit scene. You just go into the view did load, you set the scene, you load it up, boom, there you have it inside of your scene. Now where things get interesting is what inside of the view will appear here. So you can see let configuration equal a session configuration. Basically what this does is it, as soon as you build and run the application, it'll take the position of your phone and build the landscape or that scene around it hence the augmented reality. And then what's really cool about this is as soon as you say scene uh, view.session.run, it saves that as your position. And then that's where the augmented reality comes in where you start walking around and you're able to actually look at the plane as you're walking around, which is pretty darn sweet. I mean, <laughs> it's like those two lines of code and the scene and you're done. Apple made this dead simple for us to do. And also one other thing to note is our scene view up here is not just a normal scene view like in scene kit, it's an AR scene view. So that also plays into the ability of tracking things as you're moving around. Now, of course, tracking is not perfect. They don't have all the sensors and doodads and stuff like that for us to work properly. Um, so what we can do, so what Apple does so again, what Apple does, and you'll notice this, is it, of course, takes the position of your phone and it works around that. And then another thing to notice about ARKit is it actually uses kind of depth sensing. It notices where objects are and we can build objects around that. And we'll be doing that in, uh, when we get into touches. So when you touch on a screen, it's going to actually place a ball here or something like that. It's actually going to put it on top of an object at a certain disk distance. And that's what's really cool about ARKit. So yeah, I could talk about how awesome augmented reality is. I'd really like to look at the code behind it and just gain an understanding of like, how exactly does it sense the depth? But yeah, another thing I just wanna note here is inside of our art.scene assets, this ship.scene right here, this is your, your scene that you're building and running. And what you can see here, if we were to build and run this on our iPhone, is let's go ahead and just take a look at the position of this plane. So you can see the position of this plane is zero, negative 0, negative 0.1 Y, so it's gonna be slightly below your looking level. And then your Z value is gonna be that far away from your position. So if you were able to mess around with this, this is your Z right here. This is your, um, this is your X right here. That's already met automatically set to zero. And then this is your Y. And you can, of course, change all that. But one thing that's really important to note here is if we put, say, a box onto the scene, um, I'm going to go ahead and add some color to it so you can actually see it a little bit better. But if we were to add a box onto the scene, and then let's go ahead and change its position to zero, 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 this is the position of your person. So let's actually make that box a little bit smaller. This box right here, you can think of this as when you build and run the application, that's where you start out as. And you can, uh, and if you actually leave this box in here, you'll spawn inside of that box, which is 
something to know. And then you can actually walk out of that box and that's where AR kit becomes really cool. But anyway, they gave you this test project. So if you were actually to build and run this right now, you would be able to uh, actually see the scene around you and start walking around. So if you have an iPhone, go ahead and start playing around with that. What I'm gonna do right now is let's take this a little bit further and let's go ahead and add some balls onto the scene when we tap on the, on the scene. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and jump in here. And all we're gonna do is just add a function in here, our touches began function, and we're gonna mess around with this. And then I'm also gonna create another function uh, that's called create ball. And then open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And then inside of these parentheses right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and expect a position, which is a scene vector three, like so. So now what we need to do is with these touches here, we need to grab our touch and kind of get the position, but where AR kit really comes in helpful is it allows you to not only get the position of where you touched, but also detect objects further away. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna do in here first is of course grab our touch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say guard let my touch equal touches uh, dot first. And then of course we're gonna go ahead and just put, because we put a guard here, we're gonna say else open cl open close parentheses and then we'll put return in here. So basically all this is doing is making sure that a touch is happening else we're just gonna skip all the rest of the stuff in order to prevent an error. Then what we wanna do with this touch is grab the position of where we should place it inside of our scene. So all we need to do for that is go ahead and say, let, uh, let's say my result equal, and I'm just gonna go ahead and set this equal to my scene view dot hit test. And then for the point here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this as my touch dot location. And then this is going to be in a UI view. And the UI view that I'm gonna be using is of course just going to be in my scene view. Then for your types of touches input here, you're gonna go ahead and just say, open close parentheses, AR hit uh, test result dot result type, and then you have these different result types. Um, you can have existing plane, feature point. I believe feature point is the best for our case, but you can go ahead and uh, see a plane anchor already in a scene. You know, it just depends on exactly what you want to what you want to do with your touch here. If there's an anchor that already exists, then you can anchor it on the anchor. Blah 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 blah. Anyway, um, we're just gonna go ahead and just do the feature point like so. Then what this is returning right here, this hit test, we can go ahead and look at the information. It's returning an array of AR hit test results. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the last of those AR hit test results. That should be like the most uh, precise touch that we get. So we're gonna go ahead and say, let my hit result equal, and I'm gonna just set this equal to my result dot last. And now what we're gonna do with this hit result is get the position of it. So first thing we're gonna do is actually grab the transform of it, and then we're gonna grab the, and then we're gonna transfer that transform into a scene vector three. So first off, let's go ahead and say, let my hit transform equal my hit result dot world transform. Now what this world transform does, and this is actually different between beta one, which is what I'm running right now. I need to upgrade. I just didn't have enough time to do so. Um, so what this returns here is a matrix float four by four. But what it should do in the latest um, uh, beta, it should return a scene matrix four, which is actually what we're gonna convert this matrix float four by four into. So ignore like this next part right here, you should be able to just live with hit result dot world transform. But what I need to actually get it working is a function called the scene matrix four from mat four. And then we're just gonna go ahead and place that right in there. And that should convert things accordingly. Now again, this is just, that's because I'm running beta one. If you're running beta three or two, it, it should just be hit result dot world transform and you'll be good to go. Now, in order to avoid this optional value right here, let's go up here to the hit result and I'm just gonna go ahead and put a guard, uh, guard let hit result equal uh, result dot last. And then we'll of course just put here return, open close parentheses return like so. And now we should be able to just delete that question mark that's inside of the hit result and we should be all good to go. And it's actually expecting an else statement there as well, so place that in 
uh, right there and you should be good to go. Now with this hit transform here, you can see that it's a scene matrix four. So we're getting closer, but what we want to do is just grab the X, Y, and Z variables out of that scene matrix four uh, so that we can create our ball accordingly with it. So what I'm going to do now is say, let my hit vector equal, and I'm going to say scene vector three make, and then our X value is going to be our hit transform dot and then in here you have um, all these different variables m11 m12 all of these um, what we're going to be grabbing is m41 m42 and m43 now why exactly are we choosing m41 m42 and m43 um, the reason the main reason that i understand is m11 m21 m31 and m41 every time it goes an in increment in 10 they all handle different things so this one's like uh, rotation, scale, and then four is uh, position. So what we're doing here is M41, M42, and M43 is going to be, of course, grabbing our position. So for a hit transform here, of course, this is M41. And then we'll do for the Y hit transform dot uh, M42. And then finally hit transform dot M43. M41 is X, M42 is Y, and M43 is Z. So just keep that in mind. And now finally with this, I'm going to go ahead and say create ball. And then we're going to create the ball at this position of our hit vector, like so. So now this is where things get a little bit fun. So we have the scene vector three that's already being passed over in here into our create ball. So now we can reference that position. And if you've ever created anything in, C in uh, scene kit, it is very simple. So all you need to do to get this up and running is we need to first create a shape, a node, and then we're gonna set the position of that node. So all we need to do is say var my ball shape will be equal to, and I'm gonna set this equal to cap uh, scene, and then we'll say this sphere, scene sphere, open parentheses, and we'll give this a radius of let's say 0 0.1. It's gonna be a pretty small radius because you know 0 0.5 is pretty big. So 0.1 should be okay for us. And now with this ball shape, I'm going to go ahead and apply this to a node. So I'm going to say var my ball node will be equal to a scene node, open parentheses, geometry in which we just feed it the ball shape. And then now with our ball node, I'm just going to say ball node dot position will be equal to that of the position that we just fed it here. And now finally, we can say scene view dot scene dot root node dot add child node and then inside of here we're just going to go ahead and add our ball node so again all we did to create the ball is we create a shape a node position that node and then we add that onto our scene it's as simple as that so let's go ahead build around this and let's see what we have and i'm actually wanting to place a little bit smaller ball so i'm going to set the ball shape or size equal to 0 0.01 now let's go ahead and build and run that all right, so here we are. It built this scene for me. The uh, plane right here is struggling to lock into a position. Okay, you're coming at me. That's, thank you. All I need to do now is position these balls. So you can see that a ball has been placed right there and you can zoom in on it. And the, or you can put a ball right on that microphone there. And boom, it's attached to that microphone. Come on. All right, this plane is getting in my way. Let's go into our ship.scene right now and just delete that and then also that box right there. Okay, build and run that again. Let's get, the... sheesh. All right, so here we are now with our blank screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and you can add a ball and it's actually going to measure that distance. So I'm gonna tap add a ball right onto the microphone and now you can see that a ball is added to that microphone. How awesome is that? Or if you want to add it to that mouse right there, boom, it's attached to the mouse and it also keeps that one on the microphone. It's not perfect. Again, AR kit's still a work in progress, but you gotta admit, that's freaking awesome. Of course, not everything's perfect in like its tracking abilities. You can see the balls kind of move at here and there and they get out of place here and there. But honestly, we did, we programmed this in what, 10 minutes? <laughs> I mean, this is awesome. Uh, just the te technology is awesome, okay? That, I, I can geek out over ARKit all the time, but augmented reality is just incredible to me, and I can't t wait to see what people come up with next. So hopefully you found this helpful in you getting started up with ARKit. 
Um, one thing I want, do want to note is if you do create anything, hit me up on Twitter. Send me a video of what you created and I'll retweet my favorites or just share my favorites or something or I'll, I'll send you love or something like that. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys found this helpful in any way. And kind of an awkward transition, thanks to today's sponsor, MassDrop.com. Basically, if you've never heard of MassDrop.com, they are an online bulk buying community. So you can buy headphones, monitors, pretty much anything under the sun. And you can even recommend products. If you if they don't have a certain product on there, you can recommend it and they'll try to work something out with the company. Basically, you team up, you bulk buy stuff, and you get it at a certain part discount which is pretty awesome. And they also make some exclusive things such as the Fostex TXO, uh, which I have right here. Probably the comfiest headphones I've ever worn. And they also sound pretty great. Um, but also two years ago, I bought my favorite pair of headphones from them, the AKG K7XX. They actually have the Sennheiser 6XX right now, which it, go and buy it because that's a phenomenal headphone brand. Anyway, thanks again to Mastrop for sponsoring this video. Link in the description down below. Anyway, have an awesome day, everyone, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. By the way, I'm recording at like 1 a.m. right now, so if I seem a little loopy, that's why.